Good morning. Good morning. Our pastor is away today for homecoming at Knob Creek United Methodist Church, one of his former churches that he served in the past, and he asked me to lead the service today. My name is Lois L. Hedgepath. I see all of you. I think I know all of you. Uh, but I always feel like I'm going to miss somebody. Um, anyway, you know the rest of that story. Let's look at your bulletin. Uh, uh, a list of things we need to, to look at uh, importantly. Many of you have asked about the uh, giving to the hurricane and tornado victims in uh, Texas and Florida. And next Sunday has been set aside as taking up a special offering for the hurricane relief uh, persons. Now, that would be an offering. In addition to that, on the 21st of October, there's going to be a renewal service at Gastonia, First United Methodist Church. And that's going to be a twofold service, one of which will be a, a district gathering of the laity. And that applies to the little slip of paper that you have in your bulletin. It's that time of year when you are, you are to select the Laity Service Award for your church. And I want you to take that, that little slip of paper and list on it the name of the person that you feel like should receive that award this year. And it's simply a person, recipient's contribution to the life of the church and the community that reflects a devotion of self to the service of others. Uh, and we will also, for those who are not here, we'll do that next Sunday. But that will be complete. That part of the project will be completed next Sunday. On the 21st of October, at that missional uh, worship service, is going to be a district celebration of all of the laity servants. Yes. It is a, per a single person or a, I mean one person or a couple. Yeah, those are the two options. Yes, yes. Uh, any questions about that? And when the offering plate is, all, is uh, given to you today, place your little sheet of paper in that, a little slip of paper as it is in the offering plate. Uh, my understanding is that we cannot, uh, in the, according to this. Uh, well, I'll do it. That's fine. I don't want to make a judgment call on that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. At that meeting on the 21st, all the churches will be bringing together uh, flood buckets, as we call them. Now, some concern has been why we haven't already done so. The conference has already already taken one tractor trailer load, some hundreds of flood buckets from just this conference. And this, this district sent the uh, tractor trailer load. But because of the horrendous da uh, damage in Texas, they were not able to do anything with them yet. So what they want us to do is they want to send another tractor trailer load. And that deadline is the 21st of October. And we can take what we complete to the October event at Gastonia, or we can take them to Christ United Methodist Church in Mountain View to store until that day. They'll be taken to Texas immediately following the, uh, the service on the 21st. So I uh, just wanted to highlight that. Uh, Wesley's Chapel Fish Fry uh, is September the 30th. Missional Network is next Sunday night at Laura Hill. Uh, Missional Network will be having a revival the week of October the 1st through the 7th. And each charge, each charge will host a night of service. Uh, the first night will be held at Wesley's Chapel. Uh, our bazaar is on the 7th of October here at, at Plateau, and there is a detailed list uh, out in the vestibule for you to put your name and donated items on. I do 
need to have everything brought, such as the Crisco, the wax paper, uh, celery salt, and all that kind of items for by next Sunday. Because what we do not get donated, uh, I must go out to buy. So please uh, be uh, mindset on bringing it to church next Sunday, what you decide to donate them. Cakes and things like that, you know you'll bring later in the week. Thursday, Friday, whatever day you select. Is that right? Friday night? Yes. Or even early Saturday morning? <clears throat> okay. But when do you want the baked goods? When do you want the baked goods? Well, if you either bring them on Thursday evening or Friday evening, I'll be here. Okay. Be to okay. Or early Saturday morning. Or early Saturday morning. Okay. Or early Saturday morning. Okay. okay. Um, that large announcement in the bulletin came from the conference, and I called regarding that. Uh, that's going to be just a one-day event over at the Catholic Conference Center. Uh, and uh, everything has been, uh, the meals are furnished by the conference. Uh, speakers are from five universities, supposed to be outstanding leaders with uh, healing. So, uh, complete reading that. Uh, and then the, the, the thing about the church, local church, lay the nominates. Are there other announcements from the congregation that need to be aired? Yes. Fire department's having a breakfast next Saturday the 23rd. I think it's $5 a plate. It's like we did the last time. All you need pancakes. And we have eggs and bacon and sausage, I think. Support your local fire department. They do a good job. Anything else? I'd like to remind everybody we're taking up candy for the floats. We're having two floats this year again. So if you remember, I know Halloween's coming.
Jesus, we feel your presence. We thank you for bringing us here. Guide us as we go through this worship service. And let our hearts and our minds open to you. And we ask you to call the name. Amen. Let us turn to our, our little strings for our opening. Him 176.
everything. Abbas, my sister, returned on Thursday, and they still were without power, but their house was all intact, and that's a blessing. Shannon left out early this morning. The roof, part of the roof, was removed from his house, so the neighbors reported, and construction people were in there this week repairing it. Uh, water damage, wind was so hard, the uh, neighbor reported to him yesterday that it had completely shattered a glass top table that he had in his dining room. So he went early today, he left at 4.35. I got up when he left and saw the clock. But he was hoping to arrive there at 2 o'clock this afternoon or somewhere about that time. And if he finds everything completely upside down, Wayne and I are going to Florida to help him clean up the, the debris because we know that everybody else down there will be doing the same thing. So, but we uh, praise God for the safety of the people there. They listened to the directions and they did really evacuate. Few people were left in Florida. Uh, so they just didn't have the, they had the damage, but they didn't have the, personal injuries that uh, Texas had. And, um, but the conference will be held in both areas. Um, and the, in regard to praises and such, we are grateful and the conference is praise, thankful for clothing and things like that, but they're asking that we hold off on those kind of items because they, right, now, right now in Texas particularly, they have no place to put them. There was so much damage. So, uh, but they do need the monies for um, food, water, and the temporary shelter that they are uh, having to have. And there will be a funding later on for their clothing and personal items. Are there other concerns? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you have heard our concerns. But most importantly, Lord, we lift our hearts to you for praising you for being our God. Lord Jesus, we hear these concerns throughout our congregation and we ask your special grace and healing power on Brenda, on Sherry, on the baby that's having major difficulty. We ask your special grace and mercy on Pat Beard. And the baby and mother that were in, were in the car accident and they're frailing with all sorts of emotions from that. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the military that you've placed and directions of our leaders of that group that need your guidance and for them protecting us, knowing that all protection comes from you. Your grace and mercy is needed with our people in Texas, those that are in Florida, and those in all areas that have been affected emotionally and physically by the storm. Lord, we thank you for this country. We thank you for the surrounding and entire world. We thank you for this church. Lead and guide us, we pray, to direct our hearts toward you. To really seek your will, Lord, rather than our own. Lead us in this worship service, we pray. Lead us through our Sunday school and all the classes that join together in learning about you. Forgive us of our many sins dear Lord. And now we ask that our people pray to you as they share the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And 
the story led about here we go. If the children will come forward, all of them, wherever they are. <clears throat>
just like those bad things that bump into you and make you sad. There's always something good that the Lord makes sure that you get from it. I could say, did this bad leak? And you all could have said no, but it did leak a little bit. But the good thing is I have to help her to help us. Okay, time for the trash can. <laughs>
for Jerry Swartz, for Tyler's baby, for Betty Johnson, for Barbara Kirby's friends and baby, for Pat Berry, and all those that have been unmentioned but still are within our hearts. Lord Jesus, we just ask your special grace and mercy on all of these askings. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
And somebody said to me, coming in this morning, you do know the two words. And I said, yes, dear. And they said, that's correct. So I, I got it right. So she's... <laughs> Searching for wisdom. I'm sorry. Searching for wisdom. I was searching for truth. Uh, searching for wisdom. I'm sorry. Anyway, the scripture reading this morning is coming from James and starting with the first chapter of the 8th verse. Greetings from James. The letter is from James, the slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is written to Jewish Christians scattered among the nations. Greetings. Dear brothers and sisters, whenever trouble comes your way, let it be an opportunity for joy. For when your faith is trusted, tested, you will endure, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, it will be strong in character and ready for action. <coughs> if you need wisdom, you will want to know what God wants you to do. Ask Him. And he will gladly tell you. He will not resent your asking. But when you ask him, be sure that you're ready to expect him to answer. For a doubtful mind is an unsettled, is as unsettled as the wave of the sea that has driven and tossed by the wind. People like that should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. They can make up their minds. Their way that they wave back and forth in everything that they do. And then if you turn over to James 3, we're going to be reading uh, verses 1 through 4. Dear brothers and sisters, not, not many of you should become teachers in the church. For we who teach will be judged by God in greater strictness. For we all make many, make many mistakes. But those who control their tongues can also control themselves in, any other, in every other way. We can make a large horse turn around and go wherever it wants. If we want it by means of small bits in its mouth. And a tiny rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot wants it to go, even though the winds are strong. And then we find down at the 12th <coughs> Can you pick the olives from a big tree or figs from a grapevine? No, you cannot draw fresh water from a salty pool. If you are wise and understand God's ways, live, for, live a life of steady goodness so that only good deeds will pull forth. And if you don't brag about good you do, then you will be truly wise. But if you are a bitterly jealous and there are selfish ambitions in your heart. Don't brag about being wise. That is the worst kind of lie. This is the reading of the Lord's Lord. Let's all the tools and be glad in. Basis 
for our social gospel and our responsibility to the, to the nature of Christian discipleship. The book of James reads like a sermon. It tells us that when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Do we hear that on a regular basis, but do we believe it? Think on that. When the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Who was James? Some say that he was the brother of Jesus, but it is more likely he was a dear friend close to him. He could have been a cousin of Jesus, but whatever. We do know that James was a late follower of Jesus and one who had a dramatic experience with Jesus Christ as Lord. Now you know that latter part is what makes the difference. He just didn't flatly uh, know Jesus. He knew him as Savior and Lord. How do we search for wisdom? Looking at 1 Corinthians 13th chapter as one of our bases, what is said about love can also be said about wisdom. Who is wise and understanding among you? And how would you describe a, a wise person? Some people, for the first word that would come out of their mouth, is nice intelligence. Someone that's really smart. Reads lots of books. But James didn't give us that kind of description. The 14th verse speaks of a man's good life, as Wayne read it. A man is wise who has a good life, which is brought about by good deeds that were performed with humility and wisdom. The first and most important step in searching for wisdom is to walk in the master's sandals. In other words, simply placing your feet in those sandals of those around us. It's easy to give advice about issues and feelings that we've experienced, but losing yourself into the entirety of another situation is a story that Jesus repeated in so many of his teachings. What comes from this totality of understanding is wisdom. The story of a young child who was asked to describe or tell about a saint is a good illustration. The, scholar, the child is scholarly, very intelligent background. She was renowned in literature and art. Thought for a brief moment to recall how she felt when viewing a stained glass window of the church. And she simply quoted, A saint is somebody who the light shines through. A saint is somebody who the light shines through. The child, like all Christians, should be described as those through whom the light of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shines brightly. The scripture teaches us three ways to find wisdom. Number one, listen, listening is the first step. Wisdom may be found foremost by listening rather than by talking. Listening enhances the heart and mind at the same time. The mental and emotional peace that comes from listening overwhelms any amount of turmoil. Secondly to that, one can find wisdom in humility. Never in arrogance, you see, humility is the result of listening. It's the product, it's the caring of the widows and orphans in their suffering and, and taking stuff to Texas and to Florida and, and getting out there in that old nasty water with boots and, and helping each other even though your home on the other street is completely destroyed. To keep oneself from being 
corrupted by the world. Thirdly, we discover wisdom through a non-judgmental approach to life. That was sometimes things hard to do. A non-judgmental approach to life. How often have we clucked over someone else's sins? Real or imagined? Our gossip or made snide remarks or other cutting comments when the fault ended up not being really so bad in what they did, but in the person who's doing all the blabbing. Have you ever observed a trial of them? That's a competition requiring running, swimming, bicycling with a measured and exhausting distance with little or no time to rest. Several years ago, a television portion of the competition showed the end of such an event. Only six persons had made it to the point of what they called the finish line. And they looked exhausted and so tired, you could feel the anguish that came upon them. And spectators began pouring water on them as they entered close to the finish line. There was a third place participant who was barely ahead of the person behind her called fourth place. When she saw that fourth place person beginning to fall, that third place participant took the man by the arm and shoulder and brought him with himself and in so doing gave up the final hope of winning. He didn't win this race, but he surely won the race of wisdom because he brought some with him to the finish line. Paul in the first Corinthians, that 13th chapter that so often read, speaks of love in the same way. Wisdom and love go hand in hand because both are not ill-mannered or selfish or irritable. Wisdom is going across that final finish line with others in sharing the bond of Jesus Christ. <coughs> so many times we celebrate ourselves in events and in things. And some of you have even... Um, heard me talk about the laity award. Uh, and you know what I said last last year when Wayne and I won it. What I do here at the church is not because of me. It's because I love the Lord Jesus Christ and I love to serve Him in this community. Uh, that's just the way it is. But uh, we can look at it in a different light. But going across that finish line with others in sharing the bond of Jesus Christ gives that peaceful feeling of understanding of our Lord. So it's listening. It's humility. It's that non-judgmental act in how you feel toward others. It's okay to be able to identify wrongs and rights, but when it comes to striking out of the person personally is when it becomes <coughs> that wrong. And so many times in conversation, you can hear people's hearts cut out because of simple conversation. The story of Samson in the Old Testament, the book of Judges, reminds us of this kind of truth and of the understanding of wisdom. <clears throat> Listening, humility, and that non-judgmental approach to life. Samson listened in his early years because he knew that the vow that had been made by the heavenly messenger prior to his birth, he knew what it was all about. In return for his keeping the vow, refusing to cut his hair, Yahweh would give him phenomenal strength, which he was to use to deliver Israel from the hands of the Philistines. His strength could stop everything. The boxes were used to burn the Philistines' harvest when he tied their tails together and set them on fire. 
In Gaza, he pulled the gates of the city when he was trapped as if it were a howling prank. Samson could not be stopped by anyone except Delilah, a Philistine woman who persuaded him to tell the secret of his strength. Samson was judgmental and had lost humility. He had forgotten that he was the he was to save his own people, the Israelites. He lost track of listening to Yahweh in an evening of passion. He told Delilah that his strength lay in his hair. When he slept, she shaved his head. The Philistines attacked him and he was helpless. Could not resist them. They gouged out his eyes and told him and took him to prison in Gaza. And he was put to work in prison by grinding grain. To celebrate, the Philistines planned a festival and staged a sacrifice to their god, Dagon, or Dagon. They brought Samson from prison to make sport and to harass him. He was so rejected, for he knew he was responsible for the torture to the Israelites. You see, Samson put his people aside and used his strength for his own enjoyment until he broke the vow. Now he is mocked as the Philistine led him through the streets of Gaza. The book of Judges says that Samson was regretful because he had wasted his life. He had failed to make his divinely given powers a real blessing to Israel. In his last prayer, Samson asked God to give him one last burst of strength. God granted the prayer. Samson, leaning on the pillars of the temple, braced himself between them, and with a mighty heave, he brought the temple crashing down around him. So the dead whom he had, whom he slew at his death were more than those that totaled all that he had slain during his lifetime. The joy in acknowledging wisdom is giving all the praise for it to Jesus Christ our Lord. It's like Samson. If you don't use it, life can be a complete waste. But you can be like a child who sees the saint, one through which the light shines brightly. Listening, humility, non-judgmental attitude, produce a mind and heart spirit of wisdom. And how do you know you understand wisdom? It's when you know to give a piece of your heart and not a piece of your mind to others. And you do it without hesitation, knowing that you have shared the love of Jesus Christ with someone today. Amen. Let us stand and sing our closing hymn.
during the prayer for the sermon or two. Some of you who have been in this congregation for a long time, <coughs> Martha McPherson passed away. Our pastor, uh, Luther, served here in, what, 65, 66, 67, in that period of time. And in addition to that, Barbara Gerhardt, Bill Gerhardt's wife's mother, passed away. He was buried, I think, last Saturday. She was 100 years old. She lived with Barbara and Bill. So let's keep those families in your prayers. Let us pray. Now, Lord Jesus, bless this. Bless these folks who are special. Guide them as they go through the week and all their undertakings. And as we leave this place, that you will be a guest in every house. Amen. Thank you.